Hey, so I am here in Tremonto, uh, which is a community in North Phoenix that is a really cool community. Uh, it's got great swimming pools and uh, there's a lot of different school options up around here, restaurant options. It's right by the I-17. Uh, so it's a really cool community. Anyway, I am here about to do a final walkthrough on a property for some clients and it's really exciting because they are moving here from Kansas. Like they are literally moving here as we speak. They're gonna be here in 30 minutes, driving across the country, arriving here to do their final walkthrough on this property and to top it off, um, the husband has seen the property. The wife has not actually seen it in person. She's just seen it on video. So when she gets here, she's going to be seeing it for the first time. They've got their three kids. I'm just super excited uh, for her to see it and for them to get moved in tomorrow after we close. But I wanted to take this opportunity to talk about final walkthroughs and the different ways that it can impact your transaction. So um, the first thing is you are, when you purchase a property, going to have an inspection period on the property. And I know so many of the things that I talk about come back to inspection periods, but it's a really big part. So in any case, there is an inspection period and you're gonna get to do an inspection of the property and more than likely in most transactions, you'll ask a seller to make some repairs. And then you say, gosh, how do we know that the seller actually made those repairs or that they made them well or that they made them in a workmanlike manner and what does that even mean? So we're gonna talk about that. And I just wanted to have an opportunity to go over that with you guys. The final walkthrough is really the point in time uh, when the buyer satisfies uh, their knowledge that the seller has completed all of the repairs in a workmanlike manner and that the property is in substantially the same condition that it was the day that the buyer and the seller went under contract. So they are going to walk through, they're gonna look for anything like major leaks, any damage that has been done, um, and that would not include damage that may have existed uh, on or before when they went under contract, just uh, significant damage that has been done since the buyer went under contract um, that happened to the property. So that would be something. And then they're also wanting to look at any repairs that they asked uh, for the seller to make. And in this case, um, and this is a great example, in this case, uh, the seller didn't actually make any repairs. Uh, they negotiated a credit, which was taken care of um, on an addendum, and they just agreed to a certain credit. So there's not really any repairs for this particular buyer to look at. But let's just say hypothetically that you were purchasing a property and that you did have repairs that you asked the seller to take care of. Um, so there's a couple of different things that you can do. So if they're more major repairs, technically you have a right for any repairs, but if they're typically, if they're more major uh, repairs, you can actually hire the home inspector to come back out to the property to re-inspect the property. Now they're not going to re-inspect the property for new items that you disapprove of. They're only going to look at the items that you and the seller negotiated that the seller would be repairing prior to the close of escrow. So the home inspector is going to look at those items and they're going to ensure that the seller repaired them or that the seller's vendors and contractors repaired them in such a manner that it satisfies the home inspector so that it was done in a workmanlike manner. Um, if the documentation used to negotiate those repairs, which we call the acronym for it is the BINSR, the BINSR, um, if the BINSR document called for those repairs to be made uh, by licensed contractors or professionals, um, then the seller actually is required uh, in the contract, unless negotiated otherwise, to provide those receipts 
three days prior to the close of escrow. So the buyer will have the opportunity to look at those receipts and to be assured that those repairs were made, that the invoices are paid, that the work was complete. Uh, but you can go ahead and still have the home inspector come back out to the property and make sure that the repairs were completed uh, to the home inspector's satisfaction because obviously they're the expert. So how much does something like that cost? Well, something like that costs probably between $100 or $150 depending on, you know, the area of town that you're located, how far the trip charge is, you know, how extensive it is. There could be some variables, but um, typically the home inspector that I work with charges anywhere from $125 to $150 if it's out of his area um, to do a reinspection on a property. And uh, he will actually issue an official report, a reinspection report that will say, I certify or I clear these items that the seller repaired as being good, uh, or these items were not repaired uh, in the manner in which they should have been repaired. And so you can then use that report to do a couple of different things. If they were not repaired properly, then you can go back to the seller and you can tell the seller, hey, these things were not repaired satisfactorily uh, and we would like you to fix them so that they're within the specifications of what the home inspector called for and or what we negotiated on the binzer. It's very important to remember that you have to put in writing what you want. You can't just assume that the seller will know that you want them to use licensed contractors for a specific repair. So that's absolutely something that you should talk about with your realtor during that process when you're inspecting, right? So that you don't have that confusion just a couple of days before closing. Um, the other thing that's very important about that, especially on more major things, is if there are things like major air conditioning repairs or you know other things like that, sometimes it can be very helpful to have that uh, reinspection report from the home inspector. If you are planning on purchasing a home warranty, and um, the reason for that is that a home warranty only covers uh, new conditions. So they, it does not cover pre-existing conditions, meaning that uh, if a condition or a problem was existing at the time that you closed escrow on the property, so one of the air conditioners was totally broken and didn't work at all and you closed escrow, um, at that point in time, the home warranty is not gonna come in and buy you a whole brand new air conditioning unit, right? And so that's probably an extreme example. But having that letter from the home inspector saying, yes, these repairs were made, everything looks good, either having those receipts, right, from an HVAC professional or if it's another type of repair, having the home inspector uh, come back out and certify that those repairs were made uh, you can essentially use that documentation if your home warranty were ever to question that down the road if it was a pre-existing condition. So that's another benefit or a little bit of forethought for you if you're somebody who's thinking about buying a property and having a home warranty. So there's some tips for you about the final walkthrough, about reinspecting any repairs that may have been made, some of the timelines that go along with reinspecting the property and doing the final walkthrough. Um, if you have any questions about that, obviously there's more to it and there's obviously uh, different hypothetical scenarios that can always come up with all of these things and that's why it's really important that you work with a professional uh, who understands those scenarios and also understands the contract and its implications. Um, but I would be more than happy to talk with you and answer any questions about the reinspection process anytime. Love to answer questions and I hope that you guys found this to be helpful and informative. And I am very excited to meet my clients who are moving to Arizona. Hopefully I will have a little bit more of that in my stories for you guys um, and some pictures from that. Thanks so much for tuning in.